everyone. Hope all is going well. You know, the part of our property that we leave completely untouched and wild and where we have our brush piles has been teeming with bird activity. I've been doing a lot of bird watching in my own backyard. American Red Stars have been such regular visitors here. It's just a lot of fun. I hope you are getting to see some summer birds in your backyard as well. I remember when I first got into bird watching, I started writing lists of birds and places I want to see. And you know, I haven't crossed all of them off, but one of them I just did. Last week, I had a chance to visit the Cornell Lab of Ornithology in Ithaca, New York. What a fun experience. I brought my family with me and I was so happy to introduce my kids to that world of ornithology. Hi everyone, look where we are. I am visiting a distributor of ours in New York State, so of course we just had to come and see the Cornell Lab of Ornithology. My kids are here, my husband's here, we're all very excited. Let's check it out. I finally got to see the live webcam that I watch on a regular basis. We looked at all the birds on the wall of birds. Remember the mural that they painted for quite a while and they were updating everyone online. And then we went outside, we went for a walk and there's a beautiful pond that we just sat there and we watched birds and other wildlife. My kids were excited to watch turtles actually. So if you ever have a chance to visit Ithaca, New York, which is a fun student town in a beautiful location, please do so. It's so worth it. Jack Campbell watched a pair of Carolina wrens build a nest, lay eggs, and eggs hatched, and then one day the behavior of the parents changed and after a few days of that weird behavior he decided to open the birdhouse and he saw that the chicks were dead. So he was wondering what might have happened, could they have starved to death? Thank you for your interesting observations on what appears to be a poor example of parenting in Carolina wrens. Without doing necropsies on the nestlings one can only speculate as to what actually killed them. Either starvation or lack of warmth or both would be the most likely cause. On the other hand, they could have acquired some sort of disease or infection during the embryonic stage in the egg, or just hatched in a weakened state and were doomed right from the start. I tend to favor the former explanation that they were initially healthy but not cared for properly. And your thought about the mother and or the father being somewhat inexperienced is not out of line either. Another much more sinister idea is the wee possibility that these youngsters were not sired by that particular male and thus he was not making any effort to bring in food for them and instead just continue to bring in nest material, basically burying them. As for what you should do now, I would reinstall the nest box to give the birds a chance to perhaps try for a second brood. They sometimes raise up to three broods a season. Believe me when I say that the female has long forgotten her lost nestlings. They have very short memories for that sort of stuff, and they're not emotionally attached to them either. It's all about hormones in the end. constantly watching what's growing in our backyard and we're doing our best to get rid of invasive species. Today we cut one of them down. Uh, years ago my mother planted an Asian honeysuckle bush and I just didn't have the heart to get rid of it. But a few days ago Audubon sent me an email showing pictures of this bush and explaining how actually destructive it is to our native species. And since uh, this honeysuckle has already produced fruit and we know that the birds will be all over it once all those fruits ripened, we decided to get rid of it today. We also walked the property and we found other spots where this honeysuckle is now growing. So once the nesting season is over, we will be getting rid of that honeysuckle as well. I used the Plant Nat app that helped me confirm that this was an invasive species. So if you're not sure what's invasive and what's native in your backyard, download the app. It's fabulous in helping us out. Well, is it or isn't it? I'm referring to whether the ivory-billed woodpecker has forever vanished from the face of our planet. On May 19th, a new study led by Stephen Latta of the National Aviary in Pittsburgh was published in a fairly prominent and prestigious scientific journal claiming to have new proof that the bird is still with us. It includes video and photographs of these large woodpeckers 
flying in a Louisiana forest along with numerous recordings of their bugle-like call. Regrettably though, like so much other visual evidence presented in the last decade, the images are grainy and taken from a distance by drones and trail cameras. The authors claim that the black and white pattern on the wings of the pair of birds clearly means that they are ivory bills and not pileated woodpeckers, which they closely resemble. But not everybody is buying into it. Probably the most damaging criticism comes from a biologist who has published numerous papers on the ivory bill and even claims to have seen them in the wild himself. He feels that sunlight shining on the wings adds that white feature to what are just pileated woodpeckers. I looked at the photograph myself provided in their paper and I have to admit it, I was not completely sold on the idea that it actually represents an ivory billed woodpecker. It's simply too blurry to be conclusive. On the other hand, the US Fish and Wildlife Service has announced that it will make a decision on whether to declare the bird officially extinct by the end of this year. So what's my bottom line? Well, while I personally do think that the bird's likely extinct, there appears to be enough evidence now to at least put a decision off for now. After all, what's the rush? Carolina wrens are not the kind of birds that we see here often. We've spotted them here and there, though in a neighboring town, Raymond Haddad has had them at his feeders on a regular basis. And of course, if you live in mid and eastern United States, then you probably see them all the time. They are not migratory, but they do wander here and there. Females and males look the same, though males are slightly larger. And Carolina wrens often get confused with house wrens. And even though Carolina wrens are more cinnamon in color. I always look for that white eyebrow that really distinguishes them from house wrens. If you have Carolina wrens on your property, you probably don't have any spiders left. They take care of that. They love insects and they also happily come to bird feeders if you provide suet and nuts and dried mealworms. Only males sing, but their songs are so gorgeous. Apparently in warmer climates, they sing all year round, but more in the spring. Pears bond for life and they work as a team when raising their young, though they're so notorious for building their nests in the most awkward places like flower pots and humans boots and vines and just about anywhere. They can have up to three broods and it's four to five eggs per clutch. All right, everyone, time to pack up. We've got a huge storm rolling in. I hope you don't find any invasive plants on your property. Take care. I'll catch you in two weeks.